Have you guys ever wanted to add more special effects to your game? Then you guys can use this currency explosion pop-up system that I've created for you guys and you can use it in your game. Everything here is customizable like the currency that displays, the amount of force on the orb, and the amount of orbs that pop up at one time. And so the first thing we need to do is make our orb. So I'm going to insert a part into the workspace. I'm just going to call it orb. Uh, excuse me if you guys don't like naming it orb. I like calling it orbs because that's like what kind of what Pet Simulator does and with their system. So anyways, we're going to set the transparency to 1. I'm going to set the size to uh, 1 on all axes and make it so that it is unanchored and leave can collide to true. So how I give it that effect of the currency is I use Billboard GUI. So insert a Billboard GUI into your orb, click on it, so select it, and you want to select always on top and follow my advice from here so that it looks good. So we are going to go down to our size and I am going to set this to 1.5 comma 0 comma 1.5 comma 0. It should give it that square shape as you can see on screen and so that's basically our billboard GUI done but it doesn't really look like how we want it to so we are going to insert an image label and there's our image label I'm gonna go down for, for the anchor point I'm gonna say 0 0.5 0 0.5 so 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 set background transparency to 1 go down and I'm going to say position 0 0.5 comma 0 comma 0 0.5 comma 0 so it's in the middle and our size will be 1 comma 0 comma 1 comma 0 so it fits the entire screen and it's scaled go down to your guys's image and right now there is no image link into it so if you guys have your own image upload it to the Roblox website if you already have it uploaded or if you haven't already and put that ID in here so I use uh, a gold icon from one of my other games and I'm just gonna use that oh it uses a gold icon and I'm just going to insert this UI gradient that I use to make it look better and that's pretty much our orb done and it looks all good even every device it looks all good and there's no nothing wrong with it as we move around it so our orb is done but by the way guys if you don't have a icon then you guys want to go up to toolbox uh, go here and go to images and you want to insert like coin or something like that there's a few icons you can maybe choose from but it would probably be better to just make your own and put it in here uh, but yeah, just to let you guys know. So we are going to insert, or not insert, but put this orb into replicated storage and then we can begin scripting it. So I'm gonna organize this a little bit better and in my workspace, I'm going to insert a folder. And I'm gonna call this orb container. Uh, you can customize this and name this however you like. I'm just gonna call it orb container. This is the folder where all of our orbs are gonna be going when they're uh, placed into our workspace. And just to kind of organize this better, I'm going to insert a folder in case storage and call this orb system. Uh, orb system, just like this. And we can insert our orb in there. And we can also insert a new module script because we're going to be using module scripts to make this work. I'm going to call this module script like a gold pop-up again. Uh, name this to however you guys want it or how it is in your game. I'm using gold, like a gold currency so uh, I am calling it gold pop-up and I'm going to copy this name and put it for our module because I just like to do that too and we are going to get a few variables we're going to get our local player so game.players.local player I think you guys should be able to see this what I'm typing okay so then we are going to get a random.new value so I'm just going to call this rng is equal to random.new this is how we will be able to randomize the amount of force applied to our objects. And from there, we're going to create a function. So function gold pop up and we're going to call this function drop. And this function will take the object that we are uh, using for our orb and the amount of orbs that we want in our game.
So go down here and it should automatically put an end here. Don't mind the Roblox assistant trying to be helpful, even though I already know what I'm doing. And I'm going to make a for loop. So for i is equal to one comma amount do, and we're going to make a new uh, thread and run it right away. So task not spawn function. When we've done that, we're then going to clone our object. So I'm going to say cloned object is equal to object clone cloned object dot name is equal to drop. I'm going to say drop. Or, yeah, we, you can name that however you guys want, like orb or currency, or I don't know. However, you guys want to do that. You can, this is very customizable on how you guys want to name stuff. Uh, so, C frame will be equal to our player dot characters humanoid root part dot C frame. So, this is exclusively for the player's character. If you want to have a custom C frame and set it up here, then you guys can do that as well. And I'm going to say cloned object dot can collide we with a false cloned object dot parent. We'll be go to our workspace dot orb container, whatever you guys name that folder to store them. So then we need to create an attachment because we are using linear velocity to basically push the object up and we need an attachment to be able to use linear velocity. So instance dot new attachment attachment dot name will just be attachment and attachment dot parent will be equal to our new orb or our cloned object so then here we get to randomize the amount of force applied on our x and z axes so random x is equal to rng next integer and again you can customize these values i'm gonna say negative five five the more the higher the range these values are, the more randomized it could be. So uh, you could apply more. So like if this was like negative 40, 40, it would be a higher chance of it uh, being pushed out farther. So you can just copy this line. So copy this, put it down here, call this random Z, and it's basically the same thing. Just uh, negative 5, 5. If you want to customize it even more, so like have random numbers for each thing then you guys can do that as well but uh, these are values that I think look good to me from there we need to create our linear velocity so linear velocity is equal to instance dot new linear velocity I'm just gonna copy this linear velocity so I can just copy it linear velocity dot attachment zero will be equal to our attachment linear velocity dot max force we've got to 250 linear velocity dot vector velocity will be to a vector three dot new we're going to put in our random x uh rng next integer you could probably put this in a variable too but i'm just setting it over here so you guys can do that if you want but in our y value i'm going to say 45 55 again customize those values however you guys want and then random z and then linear velocity dot parent we go to our cloned object you're then going to wait 0.2 seconds and we are going to say cloned object dot can collide we go to true not false cloned object uh oh no we're not doing that anymore we need to destroy our attachment so attachment destroy and linear velocity destroy so this makes it so our velocity is no longer being applied task dot wait one we're gonna wait one more second and then cloned object dot anchored we go to true and cloned object the and can collide we go to false this is just to make it so that we can't touch it touch like the actual orb and our character can't make it so we just can't touch it so it, it just makes it more satisfying that's the purpose of this and then we are going to wait three seconds before we then get rid of the cloned object so outside of this function outside of this end i'm gonna go down two spaces and say task dot wait 0 0.15 this is a nice value i've seen you can lower it this makes it so uh that it gives it that effect where it's like one at a time so if this weight wasn't here it would basically be like all of our currency our orbs would basically like shoot out all at the same time so this is just to make it look better so to actually make this work, we are going to insert a local script in starter player scripts. This needs to be a local script because orbs, they should only pop up on the client so only you can see them. So 
we have our local script here and the first thing we are going to do is get our gold pop-up module so there's it there it is there i'm going to say like wait for child gold pop-up so that there's no no interference and we are going to wait a few seconds maybe like five and then we're going to call our gold pop-up dot drop and we're going to get our replicated storage wait for child orb system and we're going to get our orb that's in the replicated storage that we made at the beginning of this video and then again we need the amount of orbs we want i'm just going to put in three just to test it for now again this can go pretty high i mean if you set this number too high it'll crash your game but uh this is basically all of our code that we need and so heading into our game if i stand still the gold should pop up and there is our gold now it kind of is a little weird maybe we could add a little bit more to how far it goes maybe a 10 I'll, I'll test these values and tell you guys uh, maybe another number you guys could use so I changed these values to negative 10 to 10 uh, both of these just on the X and Z and I'm also gonna set this to maybe like a number like 5 just to uh, add more and when we go into our game and we just stand here they all shoot out and it's a nice pop-up effect if you guys did learn something from this video or if you guys you know got a lot of help from this video and you guys get to use this in your games and it gets to improve your game please hit the like button and the subscribe button i'll see you guys in the next video peace